Good morning and welcome back to Fiction Author Business School. So today and actually next week too, I'm going to be giving you some live coaching sessions. Um, this is a coaching that I did with my friend Mallory, who gave me permission to put it on the podcast. And it ended up being really, really long, so that's why I'm splitting it into two podcast episodes. I know you guys aren't crazy about the longer episodes. Um, also understand that most of my coaching is not quite this meandering. This was her trying to figure out her book and me trying to structure my coaching calls. And so we were kind of helping each other with that. And I mentioned that at some point that I need a little more structure on my calls, but she helped me with that. Um, but I think it's a really good, even so, example of the kind of coaching I do and how I can help you figure out your story. And it's really fun to hear Mallory have some really big light bulb moments on her story as well. Now, I did originally attempt to go through and um, <laughs> divide it up by what we were talking about because we talk about the end of her story. We talk about figuring out the inciting incident. We talk about a couple of other um, just kind of character related things. But when I, <laughs> this is what I mean when I say I needed a little more structure. When I tried to pick through it and categorize, it just wasn't working. There was too much that was connected and too much that we would go back and forth about things. So I finally decided to just kind of scrap that. And I just divided it into part one and part two. So you can hear the conversation and the way it progresses from beginning to end, even if we jump around on the subject matter a little bit. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is that Mallory and I are actually in the same critique group. So if you're wondering how I know so much about her characters and about her story, and I'm just pulling things out of thin air, that is because she's working on planning book three during this coaching call. And being in her critique group, I have already read the vast majority of books one and two. So that's why I know a lot about her story and her characters. Um, and you'll also notice that we giggle a lot and that's because we're just, we're buddies and we giggle about stuff. So anyway, all that said, I think that our conversation here gives a lot of great insights into how to plan your characters, how to plan your climactic moment and your ending, as well as your inciting incident. And I think you guys are really, really going to enjoy it. So without further ado, let's get into part one. Yeah. All right. Well, should we get into it? Let's. So remind me which one we're doing. Are we doing book three? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And tell me what it is that you're struggling with. Um. So I think right now I realize I'm struggling more with the beginning um, because I went through, I've been through five of your storyteller accelerator worksheets. That's what I did yesterday on my day off, <laughs> day off from the muggle job. Um, and I realized like my beginning is, it's kind of what's lacking. And also, I I don't know why I struggle with misguided beliefs, but I do. Like okay. pinning those down because I feel like I have um, like this group of them, but I can't narrow it down to one that really guides the mm. character's journey um so yeah I think I got one of those pinned down um for Cameron I think but I'm doing it for Cameron and Dax because they're both you know point of view characters right both main characters mm -hmm. um let me let me just go through this so and also one thing I'm struggling with and I think it's kind of a struggle with storycraft in general when it comes, like I can pinpoint it in any book I read, but like, what is the inciting incident? Like I, cause sometimes when I'm actually crafting a story, it's like, oh wait, that's like the turn, the point where act one goes to act two. That's not mm -hmm. exactly the inciting incident. So I'm struggling to pinpoint that. Okay. So yeah I, okay I, I think those are the things I'm struggling with okay well let me ask you this then um do you have an ending in mind yes okay and do you have do you have an overarching theme or transformation in mind for the character yes um so one theme that I'm working with is basically that humanity is not the problem it's the solution okay that's the overarching theme. Um, and so both characters kind of feel like their humanity is their weakness. And the villain is basically what makes them feel stronger. Um, but in fact, it's just kind of, it's actually not making them stronger. It's making them dependent. 
mm-hmm. um, because it's a really strange villain. I mean, it's not a person. It's an it's essence. An, it's an antagonistic entity. force. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah. So, you know, she has this change where she realizes because she feels like she can't trust her own thoughts because the heart, the villain, had, which is the heart, has basically put her through so much manipulation has put her brain in a blender that she feels like she can't trust herself and there's only one person she can trust and he is nowhere to be found (laughs) in the beginning of the story and he um so she eventually has to learn that she can trust herself that running away is not something that can be done that she has to face it and basically sacrifice herself for the good of humanity Okay. And he has to learn how to let her, essentially. Kind of. Th- those those are kind of some things I'm playing with. Okay. So, um, in terms of misguided beliefs, I mean, you can take them out of those things that you just told me. So, obviously, <laughs> one misguided belief is that if humanity is not the problem then maybe in the beginning they believe that it is. That could be a misguided mm-hmm. belief, that their mm-hmm. belief in humanity is the problem. And maybe siding with the heart, you know, and thinking, no, the heart is right, humanity's the problem, we need to be stronger like the heart, even if it takes away our humanity, and then they'll slowly come around to realizing that is not correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I can definitely work with that, because Cameron's definitely struggling with whether the heart really is evil or not. So that would actually help with that. Where Dax that is... would be a big hell yeah, but you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so other things that I guess might not always be beliefs, but they would be character transformations. Um, so maybe at the beginning she doesn't trust herself which you said she doesn't mm-hmm. because she doesn't um because the heart's manipulated her so much mm-hmm. and then is she going to try to run away from it in some way yeah okay that's good yeah and dax has to learn to let her so maybe in the beginning he's always trying to save her exactly or, mm-hmm. and and or do things for her and it just doesn't work Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm okay good yes yes that's exactly what i'm going for so do you have um in terms of the plot do you know what's going to happen at the end and how they're going to overcome uh yes there are some mechanics i'm still trying to figure out but um yes um evil is destroyed and um, they both, you know, basically sacrifice themselves to do it for the greater good mm-hmm. because they both realize that, you know, them trying to run away and just having the life they, they want with each other is actually the more selfish thing when there are thousands of people who have the chance at having what they actually want and they're depriving them of that by not destroying the enemy. Okay. So I'm hearing maybe something like um, that humanity is worth the sacrifice. Mm. Um, I mean, it's sort of the good of the many over the good of the one. Yeah. Ish. The Mm -hmm. good of the two, maybe. Um, Thinking about that. So do you have a, and I need to come up with a name for this. Do you have a moment in line that, in mind that, um, where, like where a decision is made, do you have the transformation moment where the decision is made and dur- during the climax or like a particular line or a particular, I mean, do you have that in mind for the climactic moment? Yes, um, definitely for Cameron. I'm still kind of trying to figure out where that is for Dax. Um, and it may not be until like during the climactic moment where hers happens before, 
Okay. Um, where she, and there's kind of one moment where he, um, like shows her all the people that he's been working with because he becomes a leader to these people because they look up to him so much and he doesn't want it at all. But this is kind of where his transformation takes place too, is he assumes the role and feels like, because in book two, he felt so worthless. And because of Cameron, he's had an inkling that he's not worthless to her. And then through book three, he starts to realize he's not worthless at all because these people actually need him um, Mm -hmm. to survive. And he has these inherent leadership skills that he finally decides to embrace and and lead them. So anyway, he um, introduces her to all of these people and she kind of starts to realize, like she kind of gets that inkling like, okay, maybe I can't run away from this, but she still doesn't want to believe it. And then there is one moment where she has this group of friends that she's actually made and trying to run away is only causing more and more problems for them and for her, for the man she loves. And she realizes this is the only possible way is to destroy the heart. And I'm going to do it right now. Okay. So, Um, I mean, there's more in there, but yeah. So that is what happens right before the climactic scene where I'm assuming she'll destroy the heart, right? Yeah. It's a couple scenes before. Do I need to have it closer to that? Like, or just build on it some more? Not necessarily. Um, What I would say, though, is that that might not even be the climactic moment. I understand that's the the moment when she makes the decision. But Mm -hmm. when she goes to destroy the heart... The climactic moment is almost going to be more, or at least the high moment, I guess you could have lots of climactic moments, but (laughs) in the instant before she destroys it, you know, is she Mm -hmm. going to hit resistance? Is she going to think she's going to fail? Um, Is there something, maybe this is what I'm getting at. Is there one thing in that moment that ends up helping her achieve victory that she doesn't quite grasp until it happens? I feel like I'm building up to something, but I don't know exactly what that is. But yeah, I have that built in right before she destroys the heart um, because the heart has like one final push to get her to do what it wants her to do. Um, And it's a really emotional push for her. Um, And so, yeah, I don't know exactly what she realizes but she does realize that, yeah, this this is over. We're done. Yeah. So I heard it described in an interesting way this last week, and that was that the internal character transformation should be, and I'm going to probably mess up saying it, it should be the way that they end up solving the problem. Mm-hmm. Really. So um, if... I don't know. You said it was going to be an emotional push. Like, is it something with her mother or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So maybe you need to have something like, so, okay, I'll I'll just give you an example. Like if you're going to go with the whole, say we're going to go with the whole theme of um, humanity, not being the problem, then maybe if it's taking the form of her mother and trying to uh, convince her of that, that humanity is the problem, then maybe you need to have something that she will suddenly realize that her mother would never say that. Maybe it's a memory she has or, you know, something you could put earlier in the book and then it just sort of clicks for her in that moment. You know what I mean? Yes, I do. And I have a moment like that where um, it's actually a video log that she finds that her mom recorded for her a long time ago, like telling her that humanity is not her weakness. It's her strength. Um, even though she doesn't, she's not going to believe it within herself. That's what it is. And so, yeah, actually the plan comes together. This works perfectly. (laughs) Yeah. And so she can absolutely be reminded of that. Um, having seen her mother at this age now, instead of just like the dream version that the heart has manipulated her. her Right. Yeah. Well, she, and then my question is, what is she going to physically do to overcome the heart? 
Is there anything she does physically? Um, yes. So, and this is where the mechanics I'm still kind of trying to figure out because I'm not quite sure how it works, but it has to be her and Dax together okay. doing it. Um, which is kind of another thing. She tries to do everything on her own and it doesn't work. But when she finally, you know, works with him and they work together, because he's trying to save her all on his own. She's trying to destroy it and figure it out all on her own. And when they finally come together, that's when they're able to um, actually destroy it. Um, but I don't know exactly what that looks like. I know she is going to allow it to fuse with her again. And there's something with a serum, but I don't know exactly what this serum does. But I think the same one that Dax, Dax took that one. No, no, it's actually a different one. Okay. That um, her mom created, um, and like hid it because she thought it was too dangerous. So, do you know what it does yet? <laughs> I don't know what it does. No, no, no. I think I think what it does is it um, basically prevents the heart from manipulating the cells in the body. Okay. Um, but I only thought of that like a couple days ago, so I don't know if it works. Completely. So, like the you mean, so it, it can't manipulate them physically, but it still could maybe mentally manipulate somebody, or or does it stop it all together? Um, I think I want to say it stops it all together. I feel like that's what needs to happen. So, um, okay, so a couple of things that I would like to see. So, and I'm I'm kind of losing one of them now that we've moved on. Um, okay, that they have to do it together. So it would be cool if her mom in the video log is telling her humanity is your strength, not your weakness. But how did her mom mess that up? I would assume because she and Felix and Esther, they didn't work together. They ended up really schisming, you know, in their beliefs. So it could be something about how she knows that humanity is the strength and that people need to work together, but it just did not work for her because people decided to follow their own evil plans and all that. And that mm -hmm. could lead to Cameron realizing that her and Dax need to work together. And okay. her mom was right. It just wasn't working for her mom in that situation. Um, the serum, I don't know. I'm thinking like maybe, so maybe it's something where, because you keep talking about them sacrificing themselves mm -hmm. so you do a thing where they're going to sacrifice themselves she's going to you know whatever it is she's going to give herself over to the heart and really think she's going to be gone and you're going to kind of make people think you know she's toast and the heart's going to have her but somehow or other maybe Dax gets a hold of the serum or something and and manages to inject her with it so that it on the flip side makes it okay you know what I mean mm -hmm. like um I was just thinking of an example of that and now I don't know what it was but anyway, something like that. Um, and and I mean, maybe because you're saying she has to trust herself, maybe she doesn't, either she doesn't know about the serum or she doesn't know that it will work, but she just has to trust herself that she'll figure it out. And um, that would go well with not running away, but facing it. Mm -hmm. And two, with Dax, maybe it's a matter of he has to let her do it because it won't work otherwise but he'll still be there with the serum. You know what I mean? But but he would, I think, really rail against that. Like, no, you can't do that. It's too dangerous. What if it doesn't work? And he'll have to let her do it. But he'll still be there with the serum, which is what will help mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. David in the end or whatever. Yes. So anyway, those are just some ideas I'm having. Okay. Um. Now, Dax, he's got a couple of them because you said he has to learn to let her um save herself i guess or is it learn how to let her uh save humanity more yeah or i don't know that's a good question or learn how to let her go but more like save herself i think works more well, maybe we ought to work more with the, um, because I think the misguided belief you fleshed out more for him is not being worth anything. Mm -hmm. um, and then he'll slowly start to realize he is. But maybe we could incorporate that somehow at the end. Um, mm -hmm. 
I mean, if he, I guess it just depends on where you're going with it. If he is the one who figures out the serum or he's the only one who can get it to her, or he's the only one who knows how to administer it, or you know what I mean? Anything like that, that would give him a great deal of significance in this because mm -hmm. only he can do it. You know what I mean? That would go well with that theme. Yes. So he, and this is something I haven't mentioned. I feel like I have so many like pieces that just aren't connecting yet, but he is literally the only person on the planet who can control the heart. Oh, okay. And it's because of the experiment that happened to him before he was born. Mm -hmm. that he actually, like, he was born with the heart's energy in his cells. And um, so he just has this innate ability to control it. And so the heart is terrified of him because he could be the heart's demise. Mm -hmm. um, and so the heart is railing against him, like trying to take him out through the whole book, like sending mimics after him specifically. And okay. he just kills them one right after the other. Um and so that is one thing that only he can do. Um, so why why then wouldn't he just take out the heart? Like what is stopping him from mm -hmm. doing that? Um, that's a really good question. Probably Cam. Because once he destroys the heart, she will be gone too. Okay. And so he maybe, wants to find another way. Right. I was going to say maybe then he needs to find some way to extricate her from the heart. Mm -hmm. um, I was just thinking before I lose it, that if it's sending mimics against him, then that could, that could go well with the um, not running away, but facing it. Like maybe he is running away at the beginning and maybe Cam's telling him to like, you got to leave or they're going to rip you to shreds, you know? And mm -hmm. they kind of has to do that because they don't know what else to do. But then in the end, it's got to be something about, Could the serum maybe fend off the mimics? So I am hoping that this, they're going to try and use it on the mimics because Cameron really wants to save them. Right. Um, if there's any possible chance that she can save them, that's what she really wants to do. And everyone thinks she's crazy. Like <laughs> they're too far gone. How can you possibly do that? But that's one thing she really wants to do. And so, um, yeah, I do want to use that on the mimics as well. Okay. I mean, I'm feeling like, I mean, it's something you'll have to come up with, but in the end, because he's been run, running from the mimics and, and maybe hiding among these people and everything, that he needs to be just facing it head on, walking up to them, walking through them, but I don't know mm -hmm. what would keep them from killing him. Maybe something about him repels them or if he takes the serum, does it repel them or you know what I mean? Just something. I mean, mm -hmm. I really just have to come up with something, whatever you want it to be. Um, yeah. And then whatever Cameron does to overcome the heart, like I said, I almost feel like it does need to kill her or take control of her in some way. But then, you know, on the flip side, something with the serum will, will counteract that. But maybe, mm -hmm. so could it, could it be at all? Is there any thing you could be, th I mean, just depending again on what you want to do, where instead of getting rid of the heart or separating herself from it, she actually needs to embrace it and make it part of her and just like learn to control it rather than have it control her. Or <clears throat> are you looking more at just like destroying it? I'm looking more at just destroying it, but I have, I have considered, I'm just trying to consider all my options. Mm -hmm. Um, I really just feel like no good can come from her actually okay. embracing it. Okay. So I was going to say if somehow she could, it would be interesting if she didn't think she could save the mimics, like she wants to, it's just kind of a lost cause, but mm -hmm. then whatever she does almost like as a byproduct, they de-evolve back into humans or or whatever mm -hmm. you know what I mean um again yeah. I'm not sure what that would be but if she can figure out how to deal with the heart maybe it would be just sort of a secondary consequence you know mm -hmm. yeah I think actually that'll work really well and that could play into 
um, her moment right before, well, actually it could be like the catalyst for the moment when she's like, okay, this needs to end now. And that byproduct of, you know, these mimics actually becoming human once again is what propels her into it. Like this can be done. I can do this. Yeah. Or die trying. Right. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's make it as dramatic as we can. Yeah, of course. <laughs> All right. So um, tell me, so you wanted the beginning. Tell me where the last book ends and what you have for the beginning so far for this one. So um, the last book ends um, where Felix, um, her longtime mentor, comes and after he literally carved the heart from her chest mm -hmm. then he abducts her and abducts sean as well because he believes the two of them are the ones who will bring about the heart's demise it won't work but <laughs> but that's what he believes so now they are trapped in this facility um together where he is going to force them to try and disrate over and over and over again okay okay and Dax is where? Um, he is back at Soteria, trying to find her and also trying to, um, you know, everyone keeps coming to him because so many people were wounded in um, the last mimic attack um, on Soteria. Mm -hmm. um, and so because Cameron accidentally killed they're only two surgeons he's the only person who can help them and so he keeps getting pulled back instead of um finding cameron okay that's where he starts and how long will they both stay in each of those places for, for like how much of the book um it'll be um the first act okay maybe a little bit into the second act Okay. I don't want to do it for too long because I really want them to just work together to conquer the world, you know, but right. But it'll take as long as it takes, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> like, so I'm aiming for three chapters, but it might be 45. <laughs> it could be, could be. Um, just trying well, to manage my expectations. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen that one that's, um, it's the it's the Princess Bride one uh, where it has his saying, you know, my name is Inigo Montoya, but it like mm -hmm. names all of the different parts. It's like introduce yourself, <laughs> um, state your your mission statement, manage expectations. <laughs> like, <goes through> all... <laughs> like that one. It's so good. Prepare to die. Manage expectations. You know? <laughs> Like that is a fiction writer right there. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um so funny. Okay, so yeah, actually that sounds like that sounds like a good beginning to me. All I would recommend there is that you can use some of what they they do in those situations toward the ending with the heart, you know. So maybe I don't know where you're introducing the the um serum at, but maybe Dax is noticing something if he's got all these people that he's operating on something mm -hmm. that will give him some insight into the heart and how it might be attached to Cameron or something like that. Ooh, I never thought about that. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I'll give you a second to write it down. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. And then, I mean, the same with, with her, she might be learning stuff. She's, she's obviously learning what doesn't work if it's not working for him, but you know, if you could work in how she would get some insight into later what will work, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, there's that. Now, the inciting incident, I gotta think about inciting incidents for just a minute. Um, so I really feel like, and it's it's just, <laughs> as with all things writing, it's not a black and white answer. It's just like a, <laughs> Here's a really meandering path. Have fun trying to figure that out, you know? Right, um, right. I feel like the inciting incident should be linked to the climactic moment. Okay. And I want to say directly, but at the same time, it's usually more like indirectly. Um, but it should be like, like there should be a direct correlation, but it's not necessarily a straight line. So mm -hmm. 
one example that I that I like to use is like Harry Potter in the Chamber of Secrets. Chamber of Secrets. Um, <laughs> and it's the kind of thing that we don't, you have to like analyze the story after you've seen it 45 times to even see what the correlation right. is. Because the right. Chamber of Secrets was opened by the Malfoys. That's what we mm -hmm. learn at the end. Because, well, Tom Riddle was the heir of Slytherin, but they were the ones with the diary. So it's like a seven step process, right? The yeah. inciting incident was this elf coming into his room and getting him into trouble who worked for the Malfoys. So you see what I mean? How there's yes. this, this correlation, mm -hmm. but it's very, very indirect. There's not a straight line between Dobby necessarily and the Chamber of Secrets. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I think you need to figure out your ending and what could the inciting incident be? Um, it could be something that will be related to how they figure out how to overcome the heart. It could be something. Um, so Felix, Felix has the heart, right? Because he took it out of her chest. Mm -hmm. Is he going to keep it the whole time? Or is it going to disappear? Um, is it going it's, back in her? Yeah, it's going to change hands a few times. Okay. Um, Esther is also going to take it. So could the inciting incident be someone's Esther or somebody breaking in and stealing the heart? Or, um, I don't know, some other faction that has, I don't know, some other intention for it or, um, something happening with the mimics that changes. Yeah, I mean, all of those things are possible. <laughs> do, you, do you have something in mind that you're working with for the inciting incident, or do you, like, have no idea? So, I mean, I had an idea. I went through your worksheet um, uh -huh. about this. So, like, where, but I think I made it more direct, um, but I like these kind of, where it's almost like a misdirect, but it's really not. But it's, yeah. kind of, I don't know, it adds layers to it. Um, but I was kind of just thinking, so you know, Felix is forcing her to, you know, work with the heart and uh -huh. just keeps putting her in contact with it over and over again. And so um, it terrifies her because she remembers all the horrible things that it did and they did together. But then she also remembers all of the great things they did together. And she just doesn't know how to feel. She doesn't know what to expect, what to do, and can't trust herself with it. But it's all kind of the same thing. So um well what okay. if something about her knowledge changes like mm. like if the heart were to give her an ultimatum like you either have to accept me or the planet's gonna blow up or you, you know what I mean so that like mm -hmm. there's almost like a deadline and the heart telling mm -hmm. her something she didn't know before or and it doesn't even have to be true necessarily yeah just something the heart's yeah. telling her that's interesting mm. And maybe that's part of what you're missing is some sort of deadline mm -hmm. for the climax. Um, and it doesn't have to be a specifically like a clock time deadline, but something that just creates more tension. Yeah. I like deadlines. Yeah, well, I mean, they ratchet up tension, but the thing is, I think the inciting incident is when, in any story, something changes and now they can't go back to the way things were. Mm -hmm. So if she were to get a deadline or an ultimatum or learn something that she can't unlearn now, you know what I mean? Because, I mean, theoretically, she could be in that facility with Felix and Sean for years trying to figure it out. So what changes right. that is going to put them on a trajectory? to that climactic moment. If you can figure out what that is, you'll have your inciting incident. You'll have your beginning. Yes. That's really helpful. Yeah, I feel like that's definitely something I'm missing. I feel like as I'm writing these first chapters, I'm just kind of floundering around, like, mm -hmm. you know, pantsing like crazy, but not really coming up with anything. So yeah yeah that that's definitely what I'm missing 
so I think you need to you need to figure that out but in order to really know you know what your story is so we talk about going off the rails in order to actually see the rails of your story <laughs> you do need to kind of know where it's going so I think you need to figure yeah. out how she's going to overcome the heart exactly what that's going to look like in the climax Mm-hmm. You know, and think about what does the world look like now as opposed to what it will look like after and mm-hmm. you know, what exactly is going to change what is going to change for Cameron what is going to change for Dax what is going to change for Soteria what is going to mm-hmm. change for the other characters I mean I don't know what your other characters are doing I mean are you going to have Riggs trying to stage a coup somewhere I mean we don't you know figure out like how exactly they're going to be involved if it's on the periphery you know mm-hmm. um anyway if you can figure out what is going to change like what they're going to do to come to overcome the heart then, so the what would be the event, it would be the plot. The how is going to be her internal change. So mm-hmm. she's going to have to change internally in order to um, triumph over the heart somehow. And he, so mm-hmm. even though that triumph will be physical, she has to change internally to make that happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then once you have that, then you just reverse engineer from there. Okay. Actually, my, my podcast this week is about climactic moments and... <laughs> <laughs> engineering and stuff so I was recording this not too long ago oh how about that yeah. I feel like your podcasts always line up with what I'm struggling with at the moment, so <laughs> that's good <it> works for me. <laughs> we're on the same wavelength here yeah 